folks, welcome back to the Liverpool Complete Playthrough. Good morning, and uh, we're going to start things off then. Talking about a little man called Sadio Mane, a guy that I'm sure you're familiar with. Plays on our right wing, has obviously had a very, very good season for Liverpool in real life. But the question is, he's not scored in a little while. If you take a look at some of the, uh, the, the stats and facts, you can see here, if you look at the team goal attempts, the last goal he scored was over 900 minutes ago, which if you do the maths, is just over uh, 10 games. Not ideal. Uh, he's only scored two goal for, goals for us in the Premier League so far this season as well. Four assists isn't too bad and a 7.12 average rating is nothing to be scoffed at but I think we need to try and get some more goals out of him. You can see from the amount of shots he has uh, he's not really having as many as any of our other creative players in forward line. Coutinho especially has a lot of shots. Um, obviously Firmino playing up front you'd expect to have quite a few as well but Keita on the other side has not double but I mean a, a, a majority more than uh, than Mane and uh, that is a little bit of a concern for me especially the fact he's not scored uh, more recently so what we're going to do in our tactic is take a little bit of a risk and change a few things around with him I'm going to get him shooting more often. I want him to. I want him to be a threat going forward. He's a he's a guy that's capable. I think he's got one of the fastest hat tricks in Premier League history. So to get him in the goals a little bit more is what we're looking for. And uh, I'm hoping that just by making him shoot more often, we'll see a little bit more of that. In fact, if we can get him further forward as well, I think both areas. I think we can afford to push him on. Henderson does a great job of covering on that right hand side with Klein. And uh, Matip's probably our stronger defender of the back two, we're hoping no matter who the back two is. So I think we can afford to push Mane on a little bit, get him forward whenever possible, and uh, getting a few more shots on goal. And hopefully we'll see that today. Now, today's game then is against Southampton, of course. Oh, sorry, against Sunderland. Uh, Southampton was last time against Sunderland and it's a game that I really do think we should be winning. Uh, they've had a decent season though. Of course in real life under David Moyes they're not playing very well at all uh, in football manager land though despite having minus 7 goal difference which is quite funny to look at. Uh, 25 points are quite clearly in ninth position and that puts them above Manchester City and Everton so a game today that is going to be tricky but at the same time a must win interestingly here by the way. leaders, uh, Leading producers of elite footballers um, Real Madrid apparently have produced the most are we on this list? No, we're not on this list. Uh, a few players have been called up for the uh, African Cup of Nations. Well, actually, that's interesting. Only one, pl only one player. Only Joel Matip. So does that suggest... Well, hang on then. Does that suggest that Mane and Keita aren't being called up for the African Cup of Nations? That's something to keep an eye on, I guess. Well, that was obviously a concern, but if it's not going to be there, it's not going to be there. Here we are then. This is David Moyes' side. Uh, if you take a look at this graph, well, this little chart, chart formation, that's what it is. On this side, you can see Defoe up front carrying an injury at the moment. Um, they've got one more on the right. Barini, of course, former Liverpool on the left, and Dong and Catamol in the middle. I think they're going to try and play like for like against us, and if they do that, I think that's probably giving us our best opportunity. I think we're very, very strong in the middle. Again, decent in, in wide areas. So, yeah, again, it's a game that we should win, really. They've won 50% of their games, though, which has mentioned. For a team that aren't doing particularly well in real life, that is, again, nothing to be scoffed at. Uh, Emre Shan's coming along nicely. You can see from his... He's got a I'll tell you what, in terms of like central midfielders on Football Manager... Emre Shani is most certainly one of the best ones for that. You can see he's just got so, so much, so much well-roundedness about him. Uh, right, then, Sunderland's coming up in a few days' time. Uh, we've not really got too much else to worry about. Injury-wise, Lucas and Pastore are currently out. Three weeks left on Lucas' injury, and Pastore is out for another seven weeks with his dislocated shoulder, which will get us into January and beyond. And um, so far, I think this is fair to say it's been a pretty... Horrific signing, and um, there's always going to be one, though, isn't there? It's just not worked out as planned. Um, and, and if the two guys, if if Keita and Mane aren't going to the FM Cup of Nations, that's going to cause its own problem as well because he's not going to get as much game time. Um, there's lots of things suggested tactically for me to change. I just don't want to listen to them, frankly. Uh, right, we're going to change things up a little bit for this game against Sunderland coming up, though. Uh, Emre Shan's going to come back in. I think we're going to keep. Um, now, this is a question, isn't it? Do we play? Someone like, I think Saeed is going to come back in for Moreno. Do you play Adam Lallana on that left-hand side, just sort of floating in? Or, I don't know, do we keep Keita there? Especially with the way Mane is going to play in this game. I think we probably keep Keita there and then bring Lallana on. Because he can play either side and centrally. So he's quite a good player to have off the bench. So I think we'll keep him on the bench for now. Uh, we'll do this press conference as well. Uh, Bournemouth have, have been the feel-good story of the Premier League so far. <sighs> yeah, second still. Um... So far, with their brilliant performances, defying expectations at every turn, what have you made of them? Can we talk about Liverpool, please, is what I'm going to say. <laughs> uh, how do you think a gap of just three days since playing Southampton? Of course, great 4-1 win against them. Could affect your players. 
Uh, these these runs can be tough on the legs, but the momentum it generates is fantastic. I would probably agree with that. Are you considering rotating the squad with the Everton match in mind? Of course, Everton coming up after this next episode will be the Everton game. Of course, the Merseyside derby, always a big fixture. And then Leicester uh, after that one as well. I've got a talented and capable squad. And if changes are made here, then it's a fantastic moment for some of them to make life even harder for me uh, ahead of the Everton match. And there we are, then press conference done. Before this Sunderland game, not many questions about Sunderland, but one about Bournemouth. And uh, I'm on about the upcoming game against Everton. Right, I think apparently Origi's got a cold. So he's going to be out for one to two days. So he won't feature today. Was he on that bench? I imagine he was. Yes. So Danny Ings is going to come in for him. Uh, James Milner's an interesting case this season. It was 140 grand a week. Might be the sort of player. Let me know in the comments. Would you think about maybe moving James Milner on? It's his second season at the club. So it would be, it would be possible to move him on. But is anyone seriously going to come in? Like, these wages are the problem. Who's going to come in and pay James Milner a similar wage to that? I can't imagine there'll be too many clubs out there willing to do that sort of thing. So here we are then at the Stadium of Light. It's Sunderland versus Liverpool. We're still in sixth position. Level on points with Manchester United just ahead of us and a couple ahead of Watford and Chelsea. Uh, Sunderland win today. and they'll go, they'll go on 28 as well, which will make it interesting. Now, we've only lost two games this season. Of course, you saw that more recently against Spurs. Um, but generally speaking, if you look at it again, our form has been very, very good. Only one defeat in our last sort of 15 matches, it feels like. Um, so, as we go into this game, I think the team is as set now. We've got a pretty familiar lineup. Lovren, again, still wants his move to China. And, I, and because of that, I'm going to keep him out of the team, I think. I'm not going to play him. I don't want him interfering. I kind of want to play Joe Gomez and get him into the squad a little bit more. Can we get Joe Gomez tutored as well? Or oh, we can get Joe Gomez tutored. Um, Clavan's got 16 determination. I'm looking for the highest determination to tutor him. We'll go with Clavan then. Centre-back as well, of course. Because um, at the moment, Joe Gomez, he's a really good player. But I don't know if you noticed that. He's only got five determination. The tutoring from Clavan should help that out. He's a very hot prospect as well on the game this year, is Joe Gomez. Um, I'm, t I'm very tempted just to give him a game. Just to play him next to Matip. I trust him. We're going to... Oh, this is a risk. We'll see if it pays off against Jermaine Defoe. Uh, right then, into it we go. Finally, at long, at long last, I should say. Sunderland at the opposition. A game that on paper you'd look at and you'd go, you're definitely going to win this. But because of the good form of Sunderland this year, um, I guess they are a little bit more of a concern than they would be normally. Ordinarily, you'd think they'd be in sort of a bottom six position and they'd be a little bit easier. We are focused for the game, though. Uh, Sunderland at 7-2. to two, And uh, it's a win for them. Can be from up to 7th position. Right, what, what, what team have they got out there, then? Jermaine Defoe is going to be up top through the middle, the 34-year-old. Um, he's got a hip injury. Once two days. So they're risking Jermaine Defoe. Yanazai is going to play him behind. He's a, he's a dangerous young talent, of course, on loan from Manchester United. Barini, a decent player as well, someone to be aware of. Catamolan and Dong. It's quite a solid uh, formation in the middle. I think Jolien Lescott, though, uh, is going to be someone we can maybe get at. Not the same player as he used to be. And Still a bodgy next to him. Actually, I rate quite highly. So we'll see how we do it against him as well. Right then, let's get into it. Let's crack on. And uh, I'm excited. I think we can get a win today and probably a good win at that. Of course, we'll try and mid-manage as much as possible. We're on standard fluid. So we'll kick things off in that fashion. Oh, of course, we'll, we'll do our... I mean, I don't I don't really know why they're forced to stand here like this. Like they shake hands, don't they, and whatnot. But I don't know. I don't know... If there's that much point in it, I, I, I guess sets a good example. Is that why they do it? Probably. Uh, right then, here we are then at the Stadium of Light. It's Sunderland Liverpool. Can we continue our decent form this year? Ignore that game against Spurs. And the big question is, can Bournemouth, who have just gone 1-0 down, continue their miraculous run? The journalists are interested. And, and deep down, I think so am I, actually. Uh, we might change up the camera today. I might go for a bit more of a main stand further out look we'll see how this goes today I'm, I'm interested to see it from a different perspective it's quite far out isn't it i mean we can zoom in on it actually it's a little bit of a scroll in and uh yeah it gives us a bit more of an over the top view we can see a little bit more we'll try it for one game let me know in the comment section if you prefer it or not it's kieta with a shot on goal just goes wide this is actually quite similar to the new camera at anfield i don't know if you've seen it on like match of the day on sky sports but because the stadium's bigger of course the camera's a little bit further away that confused a lot of people uh, when it was first put in henderson corner though whips it towards the back post coutinho beating in the air and now uh, Kiesa is going to be on that left-hand side. He comes back on his right foot, though, and uh, gets tackled by Dilaboggi. And the ball is launched forward towards Jermaine Defoe. He's got a lot of work to do from there, but the support is coming. As he can place it into Watmore, gets a little lucky bounce into Yanazai now. Henderson, again, a lucky bounce to Ndong. We're not really clearing this at all. It has to be said. Fabio Barini with his, with his blonde hair as Defoe strikes. Mignolet saves against his former club. 
And Nathaniel Klein gets it forward. Deary me, and Dong back on it again then, causing problems. And actually, you've got to say, Sunderland there looked pretty good. And at half-time, is already upon us. The standard fluid hasn't really done anything in that first half. And Roberto Firmino hasn't been in the game. Of course, we focused on Sergio Mane at the start of this episode as well. And he's not really been in the game too much at all. I've given one of the worst team talks I'm ever likely to give. So let's try and fix that immediately. I'm going to say I'm not happy with the defensive work. This is the one that always breaks it. There we go. Uh, why does that happen? Why were they happy? And then when I said to the midfield, yeah, I'm not happy with you either. They go, well, yeah, well, now I'm confused and demotivated. Okay, then. Right, we're going to go attacking though. And I think we're going to try and pass the ball into space. We're going to try and get more out of Mane on that left on that right hand side. I think to add a bit of balance, we might bring Lalana on at some point quite early in the second half. And um, I mean, defensively we've done all right. Gomez, of course, who he was a late inclusion, is doing okay. Matip next to him is on a booking, so that might be a bit of a concern. But um, yeah, so far not that many highlights in the game. As the ball, is, the ball is pushed forward, Henderson into Coutinho, gives it to Roberto Firmino now. Lovely through ball to Mane, who's got nicely forward. Sadio Mane, can he get back in the goals? He can! Oh, wow. That's, <laughs> I'm so pleased that at the start of the episode we talked about it and we tried to get more goals out of him. His first goal in nearly 10 games, nearly 1,000 hours of football. I think he's just beaten that, actually, even before it got to 1,000. He's finally back in the goals. Great ball from Firmino. Gets a tad fortunate, you might say, but on his left foot in that near post. Beats Jordan Pickford. It's Sunderland nil, Liverpool 1, and Sadio Mane is loving it. He's giving it a bit of that, which I, can, I think we can all get on board with. Uh, we are still going to make that change, though, and now we're gone here. We're going to bring Adam Lallana on, on that left-hand side, as an inside forward. He's played there for us before this season, so we're going to play him there again. And uh, hopefully now we'll stay attacking for a little longer. Um, we may all well switch it up to the counter at some point. Now I'm sure Sunderland will put a bit more pressure on. And as we say that, they've got a free kick. Dillabodji into Paddy McNair. They've got an option on this right-hand side. I think it's Billy Jones. If he can get a delivery, and we could be under a bit of pressure. Gives it to Duncan Watmore. It's blocked and falls to Yanazai again. Defoe still lurking in the area. Ever present is Jermaine Defoe. Always a problem. As uh, Yanazai again slides it towards Jermaine Defoe. Matic with a good clearance. And uh, the header. Eventually, I think, are we going to come out with this? I don't know. It's been it's up in the air. Coutinho gives it to Adam Lalana On the ball. Great three balls towards Roberto Firmino. Who could be in here. Roberto Firmino. One-on-one -on -one with Jordan Pickford. You'd expect him to score, wouldn't you? 20 minutes to go. That could be a key moment in the game. As uh, Sunderland make a change at the back as well. But it's a corner kick. And it'll be, I imagine, oh, it'll be Adam Lalana. I thought it'd be Henderson. Lalana to take. Towards the back post. Matip heads over. And it's a goal kick. I think we will now go a little bit more conservative, a little bit more uh, counter-attacking. But so far, so good. Great that Firmino, by the way, got an assist in this game and had a chance there because he's been a little bit absent in recent weeks. I want to see a little bit more from him. Joel Matip struggling at the back. Yellow card and struggling for fitness. Let's let's make the gamble. Let's bring Lovren on. And I'm also going to bring uh, Danny Ings on for, for Roberto Firmino up top. Extra pace up there. Uh, double change there. A bit of a risk to bring Lovren on in this late stage. Rarely do you make defensive changes in this sort of scenario. But the pace of Danny Ings will hopefully cause an extra problem. Coutinho then. Free kick. Last 45 seconds of the game towards Danny Ings. Cleared back out to Coutinho. And we're hoping... Well, I don't want anything daft to come from this. No counter-attacks especially. As uh, Gomez plays it out to Emre Shan. So far, I've got to say this season, we started, as, as I've mentioned quite a few times, really, really poorly. But we've turned it round phenomenally as uh, Henderson gives it to Mane, who is going to be the goal scorer today. And hopefully the winner, although maybe I'm speaking a little bit too soon. Ball played out to this right-hand side as Duncan Watmore drives forward into the box. Great, oh, I mean, lovely defending from Joe Gomez. You've got to appreciate that as the ball is launched forward by him. I mean, Sunderland will come again. There's about five seconds left to go. There'll be one final chance if they get it into the middle right now, and they do. It's a great delivery from Watmore. Barini's on the end of it, but Klein, I thought I'd dealt with it. Can we deal with it, please? Klein gets it away at last. And there we are then. Sunderland nil, Liverpool won, up to fifth in the league table. I've got to say, we're winning a lot of games, so we're doing quite well. But because of that defeat to Spurs, it's kind of halted everything. I should say, speaking of this, uh, defeats and Spurs, well, they haven't been defeated. But Bournemouth have gone top of the Premier League table after 17 games. They're doing a Leicester, essentially. 39 points, 12 wins, 2 defeats so far this season. Bournemouth are on the warpath this year. Uh, as I say, we're up to fifth then. Level on points for Manchester United. We leapfrog Arsenal. Chelsea making some headroom as well. Headrooms? Headway, I think the phrase I'm looking for. Uh, Southampton, again, another win for them against Everton. And then and Spurs then dropping points against Leicester. And that's really opening up the Premier League uh, this season. But that is going to bring us to the end of today's episode. If you have enjoyed it, do drop a like. Next episode then will be the Merseyside Derby against Everton. I'm looking forward to it. It should be a good one. And we just got some money for Christian Benteke. Can life get any better than this? Find out next episode. We're love with care. Goodbye.